Today, I'm gonna teach you how to take elevation and transform it into a beautiful presentation-ready image in Photoshop. Whether you're a student or a professional, this step-by-step -step workflow will save you time and impress your clients. Let's get started. Okay, so here's the simple process I like to follow when rendering an elevation in Photoshop. First thing we're gonna do is add textures to the building itself. Make sure you have your line work layer selected, grab the magic wand tool and start selecting the windows and curtain walls. What I'm doing here is just grabbing all the glass areas so we get one nice clean horizontal glass strip. When you're done with that, open your glass texture, go to edit and click define pattern. Now hop back to the main file, click the little circle icon at the bottom, that's the adjustment layer button, and choose pattern. Scroll through the patterns until you see the glass you just added. You can play around with the scale and the angle until it looks right. I think mine looks pretty good, so I'll just turn the opacity down a bit to make it softer. Next, we'll do the same thing for the walls. Select them with the magic wand tool. Go to the concrete texture, choose edit, define pattern, and then add it as a pattern fill just like we did for the glass. Again, I'm gonna drop the opacity a little bit so it doesn't look too harsh. I also like to make the vertical masses a little darker to give the building some depth. So select those areas with the magic wand tool, then go back to the adjustment layer button and choose solid color. Pick a nice dark shade, not too dark, just enough to create contrast. Last part for the building is the louvers. This one's easy, just grab the rectangular marquee tool, select the louver areas, define the louver texture as a pattern, and apply it. Super quick, super easy. Now, looking at it, I feel like the concrete could be a bit darker. Here's what you can do. Hold Control and click on the layer mask to reselect that area, then go to the Adjustment Layers icon and choose Solid Color. Pick a slightly darker shade and perfect. That looks way better. To keep everything organized, let's group our layers. Select the first texture layer, hold shift and select the last one. Then click the little folder icon at the bottom to create a group. I'm just gonna name my textures so it stays nice and clean. All right, now let's add some shadows. This is where the elevation really starts to pop. First, create a new group and name it Shadows. Inside that group, click the plus icon to add a new layer. Grab the brush tool and choose a soft round brush. Adjust the brush size until it feels right for your drawing, then lower the opacity of the layer a bit. Now, start applying shadows based on where your building masses overlap. The closer or more forward elements should get darker shadows, while the ones further back can stay lighter. I'm adding my shadows to the left, a little bit up and underneath to match my light direction. Once you finish that first pass, create another layer in the same group. This time, lower the opacity even more and make your brush bigger. Go over the same areas again. This helps build up a softer, more realistic look. Finally, let's add a little bit of shadow on the windows. Create a new layer, keep the opacity low, shrink your brush, and gently paint some shadow right along the edges of the windows. And that's it. Adding shadows really helps define the building's masses and makes the whole elevation look much cleaner and more professional. There are lots of ways to do shadows in Photoshop, but this is one of the easiest and quickest methods. Just follow these steps and you'll get great results. All right, step three is all about the background. First, let's get rid of the white background behind the elevation. Select the elevation layer, grab the magic wand tool, and click on the empty white space. Since we're selecting the background, hold Alt while adding a layer mask. This will hide the white and keep only your elevation visible. Next, create a new group and name it background. Drag it under the elevation layer so it stays behind everything. Inside that group, create a new layer. Use the rectangular marquee tool to draw the ground line. Then go to solid color and choose a nice dark brown, not too black, just enough to give contrast. 
Now let's add some texture to the ground. Open your ground texture, go to Edit, Define Pattern, then apply it as a pattern fill. You can scale it and adjust the angle until it feels right. This may take a few tries to get perfect. Once the pattern looks good, select its layer mask. Use a soft round brush with a low flow, make it nice and big, and gently fade the sides so the ground blends naturally into the background. Keep the middle a bit stronger since it connects to the building. Now for the sky. This is where it really comes alive. Go to the adjustment layer icon, choose gradient, and pick a nice soft blue gradient. You can tweak the colors if you want a slightly grayer or softer tone to match the building. To make it even better, create a new layer and grab a cloud brush. I love using clouds to make the sky look more realistic. Try out a few until you find one that looks good. Make the clouds bigger and erase or mask out any parts that overlap with the building. Finally, play around with the opacity of both the gradient and the clouds until they look balanced. I like a slightly muted sky so it doesn't distract from the building. Perfect, now our background feels complete and professional. All right, now for the fun part, adding greenery. First, I'm going to resize the building just a little bit so it feels more balanced with the background. I'll select the building layer along with the textures and shadows groups, then press Ctrl plus T to transform. To scale from the center, I'm holding Alt while driving. That looks way better already. Next, let's fix the ground layer. I'll just copy it by holding Alt and dragging it above the building layer. Perfect, that keeps everything looking grounded. Now let's bring in some trees. I've included all the greenery and textures I'm using in this video down in the description, so feel free to download and follow along. I'll start by placing the farthest trees first. Once they're in, I press Ctrl plus T to adjust the size, and again, holding Alt lets me scale from the center. Since these trees are in the background, I'll go to the blending mode menu and set them to luminosity, then lower the opacity just a bit. That looks great, they're far, but still visible. Next up, grass. I'll copy and paste the grass texture, and as you can see, it still has a bit of white around the edges. Easy fix, just change the blending mode from normal to darken, and boom, it blends right in. Then I'll copy it a few times, play with the size and position, and spread it around the building. Once the grass is down, I'll bring in a group of medium-sized trees. We size them to fit the composition, and since the shadows were pointing the wrong way, I just press Ctrl plus T, right-click, and choose Flip Horizontal. Now they match the lighting direction. Perfect. Oh, and one more thing. I'm just gonna take the trees layer and drag it under the building layer, because obviously we want the trees to sit behind the building. Much better. Now it looks natural. Before we go any further, I forgot to mention, let's stay organized. I'm going to select all the greenery layers and put them in a new group. I'll just call it plants. Now, here's how I decide what goes where. Anything that should be behind the building stays in the background group, and anything that should be in front of the building goes inside this new plants group. This way, everything stays nice and clean, and if I need to move all the trees or all the grass later, I can do it in one click. Finally, I'll add one last tree for variety. I'll play with the scale and opacity until it feels natural. I felt like the middle of the scene needed a little more greenery, so I dropped in a banana tree. But honestly, it kind of looked like a butterfly, so I just stuck with one instead of repeating it. Sometimes, less is more. And just like that, the scene already feels way more alive and dynamic. Now for one of my favorite touches, climbing plants. These are a game changer for adding life to your render. I'm going to take this vine, copy it a few times, and start placing it on the windows, balconies, and even the roof. 
You can always flip or rotate them like we did earlier to make them look natural. Let's copy this one over to the corner. Yes, that's nice. Once you have a good arrangement, select all the vine layers, press Ctrl plus J to duplicate them, and Ctrl plus T to move or resize them wherever you want. This way you can fill any empty spots and create a nice, balanced look. Oh, and I love adding a statement plant near the entrance. Let's drop in a banana plant right here. Yes, that's perfect. Finally, let's tweak the trees a bit so they blend better with the scene. Select the tree layer, go to adjustments to hue and saturation, and make sure to turn on the little clip icon so it only affects that tree. Play with the sliders until the color feels right. If you want the same look on another tree, just copy the adjustment layer with Ctrl C, go to the new tree, and paste it with Ctrl plus V. Double click to fine tune if needed. And there we go, a lush, balanced, and realistic scene. Step number five, the final step is all about adding details. The first thing I love to add is tree shadows on the building and glass. Here's how to do it. Select your tree layer and press Ctrl plus J to copy it. Now, for the walls, go to your texture group, select the concrete texture, and drag the shadow layer above it. Right click and choose Create Clipping Mask. This makes sure the shadow only appears on the concrete. Change its blending mode to luminosity and lower the opacity a lot so it looks subtle. Then hold Alt, drag to copy the shadow layer and place it above the glass texture layer. Clip it again, move it slightly if needed and adjust until it feels realistic. Wow, I love how this step instantly makes everything feel grounded. Next, let's bring more richness to the ground. Use the rectangular selection tool to select the ground area, go to the adjustments menu, and choose solid color. Pick a dark brown from the ground we already have and reduce the opacity until it looks natural. Much better. Finally, let's add a few details to bring the scene to life. A car and some human figures. Place the car near the side, making sure it sits in front of the building layer. For the human figures, pay close attention to scale. A simple trick is to remember that around 1.80 meters is the average height of a person. Use the door height as your reference. Most doors are between 2 and 2.5 meters tall, so if the person looks proportionate to the door, you're good. Here I notice that the trees look a little too bright compared to the rest of the scene. Easy fix, just add a brightness contrast adjustment layer, clip it to the tree layer, and lower the brightness until it feels right. Once you're happy, copy the adjustment layer and paste it onto the other trees that need the same correction. Or, if you prefer, you can just open the hue and saturation adjustment layer and bring the lightness slider down a bit to darken the trees. I did this step differently here just to show you that you have options. You can pick whichever method works best for you. Next, let's add a nice detail, window frames. Create a new layer, select the square brush, and start drawing the frames. To keep your line straight, hold shift as you draw. You can either draw each line individually, or click a start point, hold shift, and click the end point to make a perfect straight line. After that,
select the window panels and fill them with a color that matches the louvers. This little step ties the whole facade together. And now for one of my favorite finishing touches, flying birds. Drop in a bird PNG, scale it carefully so it feels realistic, and position it somewhere in the sky where it balances the composition. It's a small detail, but it really brings life and movement to the image. And there we go. Now your elevation isn't just a drawing, it's a complete, vibrant scene. Guys, I really hope this tutorial helped you. This exact workflow helped me so much during my college years, and I still use it today. Best of luck with your own projects, and don't forget to subscribe for more tips like this. If you have any questions or feel like I missed something, just drop a comment, I'd love to help you out.